Hello, everyone. It's, uh, it's a joy to be back. This is year 14 for me. And um, I must say, Marie's done a t another tremendous job. The last, uh, let me get that up a little higher. This year I, was, I had one talk figured out. I'll be talking about addictions tomorrow, but I was really struggling with the second topic because I didn't want to repeat myself. And you know, you're struggling with, hey, what can I talk about this year? And, and uh, so what I'm gonna talk about is how we're to live and spread the message of mercy at home and in the workplace. And really, if our eyes are opened, like Saul, if the scales fall from our eyes, we'll continue to see many opportunities. And really, whether you understand or not, you're all our leaders. Uh, you're leaders that work in the community, in your families. And um, I want to talk a little bit about leadership and servanthood. But first, an example in my own life. As I was saying, I was struggling with a topic, and about six, eight weeks ago, my oldest daughter, Andrea, says to me, Dad, you're too nice to people. That kind of, that really did not have a positive connotation. <laughs> and um, so I struggled with that a little bit, and I thought, well, i got to think about that. I, I told her I set boundaries. I mean, I, I give people breaks all the time. But I didn't think one could be too kind. Um, I, I'm not a doormat. You know, in the old song, you gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. But kindness is, is the Christian message. About a week or two later, Mercy Sunday, I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and a gentleman gave me this book to read on servant leadership. And it addresses how people in positions of leadership, such as you, Nurses in the hospital, you may be, you know, head of your ward, you may be head of the ER, uh, doctors running a practice, you've got people under you. How we're all called to treat others, that's really nothing new. It's a simple message, but it really is all about the golden rule. I'm very involved in the community back home in Tampa, and in 2016 I was president of the local chamber of commerce. And um, it was our 50th anniversary, the golden jubilee of our chambers, and the president makes the theme every year, so I decided to use the golden rule. And um, at that dinner, I came dressed as Moses. Um, but really, you know, I see people doing things, selfish behaviors, and, and what's in it for me? And it's really all about like, well, if the coin were flipped, how, how would you like to be treated? So I want to talk about, there's some very important terms here. Leadership. Leadership is the ability to inspire and influence people to action. It's the person you are and the influence and impact upon those around you. The big question is, at the end of the day, are you leaving things better? Will the people around you have a better life as a result of your actions and your example? That's much different than management. We don't interchange those words. Management is things you do like budgeting, planning, doing the schedule of the nurses for the shifts, organizing, being tactical. You can be a great manager, but a very ineffective leader, and vice versa. Now, being a servant is simply the business of identifying and meeting the legitimate needs of those entrusted to your care. Meeting the legitimate needs of your patients. Meeting the legitimate needs of the people under you at work. Meeting their needs, not their wants. That's where my daughter was confused. I meet the needs of people, not necessarily their wants. I'm their servant, not their slave. Uh, if I came to speak and I told Marie, hey Marie, tonight for dinner I want caviar. Well, she'd probably, I know Marie, uh, she'd laugh and say, well, that's a nice want, but that's really not a need. See, there's a difference. A want is a wish or a desire without regard to the consequences. It's if the people under you ask for this 80% pay raise, you go, we, we, don't, we can't do that because a big pay raise may destroy the business. But people have legitimate needs. As the doctor just talked about, Maslow's needs, I'm going to mention those. 
It's a legitimate physical or psychological requirement for the well-being of the individual below you. The need to be appreciated, the need to be respected, valued, communicated with, encouraged, listened to. There must be accountability, healthy boundaries, rules, and honest feedback. Servants then go about identifying and meeting the legitimate needs of those entrusted to their care. When you do this, you develop influence. It's the law of the harvest. You reap what you sow. I want you to think about this. In 2001, there was a book published, Good to Great. And this guy studied the best organizations, the most successful that had achieved excellence for over a long period of time. There were two characteristics that was common. What made them tick? Two qualities in all of the leaders in their company. One was humility. That goes against what the world teaches. Dr. Ron talked about humility. It's all throughout the diary of Faustina. The Blessed Mother said to Faustina, I desire humility, humility, humility. Typically you think of the boss as some hard driving guy that beats his employees and gets the most out of them. And the other is a strong character, the will to do the right thing. And that too can be countercultural. Those two characteristics are what give you influence. A leader knows when it's time to appreciate, honor, and value people. They put them first in line. You see, it's really the upside down kingdom right out of the Bible. In our society, the patients last, then it's the employees, then it's the doctors, then it's the business managers, and then it's the CEO of the hospital, when in actuality it should be the vice versa. At the top should be the patients. And yet, for leaders, when it's time for the team to perform, leaders demand excellence and have little time for mediocrity. The essence of being a leader in the home and in your marriage and in your work is to find that sweet spot between hugging and spanking. Most managers fall off the horse one way or the other. That's the struggle. Now leadership and character and love are synonymous. And that's what drew me to this topic because it seems in the last year, everything I read that jumps out at me is about love. God is love. The Bible readings at Mass. God is love. Love. Unconditional love. In my struggles in the family, I, I pray how to handle the problems with the kids. And it all comes back to love. Unconditional love. That's hard. Leadership is a skill. I remember when I was a med student and uh, one of my rotations was in surgery. And I, I hope and I think things have changed, but I remember the surgeon was just yelling and screaming and throwing stuff. I said, there's no way I want to be like that guy. I didn't go into surgery for that reason. The qualities of a great leader, humility, respect, self-control, honesty, commitment, determination, gratitude, and communication skills. Leadership and character are one. Character is the person you are when no one's watching. Doing the right thing even if it costs you something. Listening. Listening is one of the most important skills in medicine. In the last year or so I've really been convicted. I, I find myself cutting off people frequently. They talk. Before they're even finished their sentence, I've got my reply. And it's to the point now where it's so obvious to me, I'm not listening. And it's the same in medicine. Now I'm on the other side, I'm retired. And I go into the doctor and they cut me off, they don't listen. So many mistakes are made, it's like, well, if you would just let me give you a history, I, you might figure this out. We're not listening. All people are leaders. It's a very high calling, but you got to listen. I want to talk about power and authority. 
Are they the same? Power is the ability to force or coerce someone to do your will, even if they would choose not to because of your position or might. Do it or I'll fire you. Do it or you are grounded to the kids. Authority is the skill of getting others to willingly do your will because of your personal influence, because of your respect, because of your character, because of your humility. Dictators have power, but they have no authority. Remember what Pilate said to Jesus? Do you not know that I have the power to release you? Jesus said, you'd have no power over me unless it were given to you from above. Jesus had all the authority. He had the power, he just didn't exercise it. Look at the authority of people like Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, Gandhi. They had all this authority. And we think it's in the power, but it's not. How long will an employee or your spouse or your child work on your team if you are all about power? You better do this. You messed up here. You got to do this. There's a times when a leader must use power. I have to discipline my children. You have bad employees that need discipline or even terminated. I'd like you to think of an authority figure, someone in your life living or deceased who had real or has real authority in your life someone you would walk through a burning house to try to save think of their qualities for me I think of my late father he was patient I was the sixth of six children. He had cancer when he was 42 years old. It was metastatic colon cancer. He had radiation and chemo. He was an insurance salesman, so if he didn't work, we didn't eat, so he had to work through all that. He treated others with respect. At his funeral at the wake, people came up to me and said, uh, I want to tell you this story. Many years ago, I was down and out. We had no money. I used to go to the back door of your house, and your dad would give me money. That's the Christian message. My dad was a convert. He loved the faith. He loved the faith. He loved the church. He encouraged others. He used to tell me, Brian, more important than your MD, your BS, all those letters after your name, FACP, FACOG, etc., etc., was the PMA, a positive mental attitude. Because he had trust in God. Trust is easy when things are going well. But when the rubber hits the road, that's when we have to trust even more. If you only focus at your work on all the tasks of the IV changes, of the medication dispensing, I got this next colonoscopy. I look back, I you know, 16 colonoscopies in one day. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but if, if you focus only on that, you know, you're going to see rebellion. You're going to have turnover in your staff. You're going to have poor quality work. Father mentioned at Mass today that Christianity is all about relationships. Our relationship with God, you have the cross, our relationship with God, and our relationship with others. God, self, and others. The key to leadership 
is to get the task done while building relationships. And as the doctor just mentioned, building trust. And that comes through your character. If you look at marriages today, half the marriages fail in this country. And one might say, well, a big burden is the financial burden. It's so expensive in this country. And yet, there's people all over the world, they're dirt poor and they have successful marriages. Poor relationships are usually at the root of the problem. People need trust and they must be trustworthy. But servant leadership challenges our paradigms about ourselves, the world, our organizations. The Chinese proverb, if you do not change your direction, you will end up exactly where you are headed. So again, if you look at this, the CEO at the top, the vice presidents, the middle managers, supervisors, associates, customers, it's really the upside down. Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. The lowest I have first, but it's food, water, and shelter. Those needs have to be met first. Fair wages, safety and security, belonging and love. And the farther along you get, the more actualized, <clears throat> excuse me, the person will be. Self-esteem. Your staff and coworkers and family and children need to be valued and treated with respect, appreciated and encouraged so that they can be, reach self-actualization and they become the best that they can be. Who was the greatest leader? I'd say Jesus. Leadership is a skill of influencing people to work enthusiastically towards goals identified as being for the common good. Over two billion people are Christians, one, roughly one-third of the population. What was Jesus' management style? You must be willing to serve. Leadership is love. As I said in the last few years, that has just kept popping out at me. Every time I read something, love. God is love. If you have love in you, then you have God in you and loving each other. Love is patient. You know, how many times have we heard that at weddings? Love is patient and kind. It's not jealous or boastful. It's not arrogant or rude. Love is built on the will. I put it here, intentions without actions equals zilch. Because our intentions without doing something about them lead to nothing. It's talk. But intentions with actions equals the will. Leadership, authority, service, and sacrifice. Love, as was said earlier, is a verb. It's about meeting the needs of others. Jesus said to love our enemies. We've got the Greek word eros, erotic or sensual. Storge, Greek word for love, that is affection between family members. Neither of these two were in the New Testament. Philos, Philadelphia, brotherly love. You do good for me and I'll do good for you. That's conditional love. But agape love that Jesus had is unconditional. It's not, there's no regard to what they've done to us. Jesus spoke of agape love. It's a love of behavior and choice. Actions speak louder in words. And it's not just a feeling. I really began to understand that how people could say, well, how could you love this mass murderer? Or how could you love this person after doing that to you? But agape love means you love the person. You don't have to love the actions they did. And you've got staff like that. You've got coworkers like that. It's not like you want to go out and take them out to dinner and to a movie, but you have to be kind to them and treat them with respect and love. You have to be a reflection of this image. When they look in you and their brokenness, they should see Jesus Christ Himself. But you must be patient, honest, and respectful. I used to work in the prison years ago. Maximum security, the worst type peoples, but I, I really kind of enjoyed it. 
Because I and I when I left, I knew I wasn't supposed to stay there forever. But when I left there, I felt good because I had treated them all with respect. So you've got love and authority. I'm sorry, love on the left. To my right is authority and leadership, and there's so many similarities. Patience, kindness, humility, forgiveness, honesty. Authority and leadership, honest, trustworthy, good role model, caring, committed. These are all characteristics of leadership. The Lord said, I demand from you deeds of mercy to St. Faustina. He didn't ask for them. He said, I demand from you deeds of mercy which are to arise out of love of me. One deed of mercy is to try to be a better listener. It's a work of mercy. You know, the Lord gave you two ears, one mouth, and one tongue. Most healthcare people are in such a hurry, they don't listen. That's why there are many mistakes. We think four times faster than others can speak. There's so much noise, and I'm talking about my own head. There's so much noise and clatter in my head that I'm not listening. I tend to cut people off, I interrupt them, and I don't let them finish. Listening is as powerful as speech. Listening saves time and effort. And when the person realizes that you're present, as the doctor has said, that's when you build trust. Do all things out of love and joy. You know, at the Transfiguration, I think it was Peter said, Lord, it is good that we are here. So many things happening throughout the world. So many amazing things. This is my good friend Dale from Florida. Some of you may know his story. He was an attorney in New York. Hadn't lived a holy life. Made tons of money on the New York Stock Exchange. Must, some of it unethically. He developed severe liver disease and was dying. They couldn't find a liver transplant for him. Doctors couldn't figure out why his liver was failing. And finally it got so bad he was having all these complications. The doctor came in one day and said, you've got an hour to live to his wife. He was comatose. But during that time of near death, later he tells the story that Jesus, the divine mercy, appeared to him and said, Dale, I gave you so many skills, so many talents, and you did not use them wisely. You have chosen hell. Now Dale, being an attorney, started debating Jesus. <laughs> he said Jesus was the best debater I'd ever come across. He said he used to, he would cut my leg out after an argument. And he thought he was going to hell. And just then the Blessed Mother appeared and said, let's send them back. I think he can do good. So he went back to New York, didn't know what he was going to do, and one day he ended up following his priest to the prison. And he kind of liked it, so he started going to do prison ministry. And then, then he, I don't know how he found out, but the, there was a job opening in Stark, Florida. That's the death row inmate prison in Florida where they do the electric chair. And he applied for the job and he got it. I have to laugh because I wonder how many people really applied for the job. <laughs> but um, he took the job and his wife moved to this small rural part in Florida. And he has become such a pro-life advocate I just saw he just some one big national award for his work with pro-life and he's turned his whole life around God can use us all all of us gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory the antidote to today's misery is God's mercy Jesus said I am love and mercy itself and if you have God in you and God's love, Faustina said, pure love is capable of great deeds. And from the diary, I have come to know that only love is of any value. Love is greatness. Nothing, no works can compare with a single act of pure love of God. I am love and mercy itself. God is love. And if you love, then you know that God is in you. And that's what we have to be. Vessels and mercy, icons of mercy to a hurting world. Thank you very much.